Once again, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all, the Eurovision online fans, to these meet and greet events. We're live from Copenhagen, from the Eurovision island. And right now, I have the pleasure of the company of András Kali Saunders from Hungary. Yes. Welcome. Hello, thank you. How are you? Everything's great. <laughs> Aww, that's good. Have you had a good time so far? Um, I was thinking... I wish I could be in Eurovision every year. Oh, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> no, a great party. Yeah, I, I never want this to end. It, it's just amazing. I still can't believe that I'm actually representing Hungary <laughs> in the Eurovision Song Contest. I just had my first rehearsal. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, tell us about that. How was that? Oh, well, when I first walked in, I just stopped and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I've never stood on a stage this big in my life, but no, it, it's amazing. I'm never going to forget this. So does that make you nervous or does that make you look forward to your performance? No, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> no nerves? No, I, I'm not nervous now. Hopefully it stays like this, but I just want to see the entire place packed and hopefully they cheer for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and sound and lighting and everything was, was the way you w was hoping it, for every, it to be? Everything is perfect. The, the sound, the lighting, everything. It's just amazing. That's good to hear. Um, Andrash, this is the third time that yes. you took part in the national uh, selection for the yes. Eurovision Song Contest. What about it, is, it attracts you so much that you come back three times? <laughs> um, well, the first time um, I watched Eurovision, I told myself, wow, it would be amazing to stand on that stage. And another reason is that I never forget that um, if it wasn't for my fans, I wouldn't be Andrash Kale Saunders, the singer. Um, I just want to, I don't know, it's like I want to repay them. I want to make them proud of me. I, I want my country to be proud of me. And I just hope that I could make that happen by doing something good on that stage. <laughs> Do you, keep, do you keep a close connection with your fans? Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's, sometimes I don't even like calling them my fans. Um, I don't know, they're like my friends, at least my my fan friends. <laughs> they, I don't know, we have a different kind of connection, I think, mm -hmm. a relationship. Um, I like speaking to them. Um, I write back to their letters. Um, not all of them, because <laughs> sometimes there's too many, but no, I think I have the best friends. Yeah. I'd like to return to that in, okay. just a, uh, in just a minute, but first I have another question for you, because your song, Running, yes. has a very serious theme. Can, mm -hmm. can you uh, maybe describe what the song is about? Well, First of all, I'll, there have been people that said, um, they asked me, don't you think this might be a little bit too serious for Eurovision? And the thing that I say is that the beautiful thing about music is that there are no boundaries or rules to the way one expresses themselves through music. So not every song has to be about love, heartbreaks, <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, yes, my song is based on a true story. It's about a childhood friend of mine. And it's about child abuse and domestic violence. Wow. Well, returning to the fans, because uh, we are operating under the hashtag Ask Eurovision on Twitter. And Sammy Sweden is, is, uh, has a question for you okay. regarding the theme of the song. He says, the theme of, the, of your song is very sad. Yes. But on the other hand, the tempo and the melody is rather upbeat and catchy. So can, can you uh, elaborate on why you have chosen this contrast uh, between theme and music style? Well, when, I f when we first wrote the song with Sakos Christian, um, um, we were in the studio, we sat down, I told him, just start playing something on the piano. And I came up with the melody immediately. And it was weird, because I like to improvise, and I already had basically the lyrics of the song from my improvisation. Um, but why? I don't know. If you actually don't listen to the lyrics, you could find yourself dancing yeah. <laughs> during the chorus. But I guess this, this is an easier way to get the message and the song to people's ears. It'll make them want to listen more. If the whole song would be just very depressing and sad, they might just switch. <laughs> but this way, you know, I grab the person's attention by the song being a little bit up-tempo yeah. and catchy. Good and point. then they get the message. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, does anyone in the audience have something they want to? Yes, a microphone is on its way, and we'll have a microphone for you. But we'll start here. 
Uh, hi, hi, Andres. Alistair Birch from S SBS Radio in Australia. Mm -hmm. You have a, a, a lot of fans who love the music. We've played it several times on the <laughs> Hungarian program in Australia. Thank you. The Kale name pops up all over Hungarian history. Can you perhaps tell us a little bit about your, uh, your family? And does it make it easier or harder to have such a famous surname? About my family, the Kale. <laughs> Kale, yes, I have a, a minister in, in my um, family, Kale Miklos. So I'm very proud of that. <laughs> I hope I carry the name well. I'm the Kale singer in the family. <laughs> Good. And there was a question here from France. Hello, I'm Das. I'm from France. Uh, I have a question. You are half American and half Hungarian. Yes. And your father is big music producer. So yes. can you tell us the big differences between making music in the USA and making music in Hungary or Europe? Um, well, I spent most of my life in New York, in America. Um, I spent nine years in Hungary, the rest were in New York. Um, the thing, something that I could say is that since I came to Europe, since I've been in Hungary, um, I've opened up to different kinds of music. When I was back in New York, I was mostly just singing R&B, because that's what I was surrounded by. And then when I came to Europe, I just started seeing and hearing different kinds of music, and then I mixed it with what I already um, knew from back in New York, and I guess that's my style, <laughs> a mixture of everything. I like blues, R&B, rock, soul, country, everything. Right, that was a question. Okay, we'll, we'll come to you okay, afterwards, sorry. yeah. Hello, um, Kali, this is JP from Radio International. Hello. Uh, quick question I have about, you are Hungarian, but you, you grew up in America, but yes. do you also sing in Hungarian? And if you do, could you give us a bit of an example? <laughs> you want to hear me sing in Hungarian? Yes, yes that would be nice. Course. My, <laughs> my first song um, four years ago um, in Hungary, the, my first single was in Hungarian. And it's the name of the song is Chuck Veled. All right, let me see. A dal újra szól, nem látlak sehol. Tudom csak játszottál, örült játszma volt. Gyúlnak a fények, lelkem menégnek vár csak mozdulnál. Börtön zárlak. Kulcsoma éjjel lassan kattan rád Zajos éjszakán Ma bennünk ég a fájt Látom, hogy a szemed villan Rám talál Egy dallam járja át Hajnalodik mégsem érzem csak veled Wow! Thank you! This is becoming a whole a cappella concert here on stage. Isn't that fantastic? I think Thank there you. was a question from Poland as well. Yes, hello, hello. I'm Simon hello. from Poland, as you said, uh, radio newsletter. Uh, I had also the question about your American roofs, but I have another one. There was one US-born singer, Katrina, who won the Eurovision Song Contest. And I can tell you that among fans here and journalists, <laughs> Hungary is the mention as the one of few countries who may win this year. What is your expectation for that? Well, <laughs> if I were to win, I think I, I might just faint <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's, I, like I said, I still can't believe that I'm actually in the competition representing my country. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to give it my all. I'm going to leave my heart on the stage. Hopefully, it's enough. We'll see. Um, in Hungary, you were on the TV show called Megastar. Yes. I guess uh, some of us know it, know it as the ver uh, a national version of Idol. Mm -hmm. um, what did that experience give you that you can actually use here? Um, well, when Megastar started in the beginning, when I was singing during the shows, the live shows, I was holding the microphone like this. <laughs> and I was so afraid to sing in front of anybody. It was horrible. Um, but throughout the show, I gained confidence, the confidence that I need to be able to, to sing normally without having those nerves in my voice. So from Megastar, well, yeah, that's where my career started. Um, that's how I got my fans, everything. I could thank that to Megastar. 
And yeah, um, the confidence, I got that from Megastar, which is very important because if you don't have confidence, you can't sing normally. It doesn't work. <laughs> and especially once you enter that huge stage, it can yes. be a bit intimidating, can't it? Yeah, well, today when I walked out there, I had fun during the rehearsal, so I don't think I'll be afraid. Oh, good. <laughs> Any other questions? Otherwise, I have a question about your background because uh, as it has been mentioned so many times before, you, you grew up in New York, but your father was also in the music industry. Yes, yes. Um, what has that meant for your relation to, to music and your preferences in music? <laughs> Well, growing up, obviously, I, I basically was born into music because mm. of my father. I remember when I was little, he would take me around to, to, on his tours, and I watched him on stage. And I would, sometimes I sat out in the audience, and it was weird how just strangers sitting next to me were screaming for my father <laughs> and cheering for him. And I, sometimes I tapped them, and was like, that's my dad. <laughs> and I, I'm just, I was just very proud. Um, I just admire what he does, and I don't know. I always wanted to follow in his footsteps, so I guess that's why I'm here today. <laughs> so you were very proud of him as a child, and now he's, I'm guessing, very proud of you. Yeah, now, now he's very proud of me, and something that people also don't know is that I never, ever asked him to help me with my career, because... Um, why is that? I want, he also wanted this, and I, me too. I, I want to experience the struggle. It, it's not that sweet when it's just given to you on a plate. I want to go through um, everything. I want to fail. I want to fall on my face. I want to get up. I want to go through it all, because when I actually reach my goals, they'll mean a lot more to me. I can respect yeah. that. So ha has it been a struggle sometimes? Of course. Yeah, there's some time, there were times when I felt, oh, uh, my dream might not come true. I may never be that singer that I want to be. And then it just changes the next day. You never know what life brings. Like, just going to visit my grandmother, entering Megastar, everything that I ever wanted just happened out of nowhere. So you've had periods of time in your life when you were thinking, I'm never going to make it. But so what made it happen for you anyway? Um, I, just, I just kept trying. Um, I feel that there's nothing in this world that I can't achieve. The only person that could stop me is myself. So I guess I am my biggest enemy, and I defeated myself. <laughs> But maybe also your biggest, own biggest help. Your of own course, biggest support, of yeah. course, yeah. Great. <laughs> Andres, it's been very nice talking to you. Thank you so you much for joining us. <laughs> thank you. And for all the online viewers, thank you so much for watching. In uh, approximately 20 seconds, my colleague Abdelaziz will be taken over here on stage. And he will be, uh, be back with Malta and Firelight. Don't forget, you can ask the artists questions via Twitter. You use the hashtag Ask Eurovision and include the name of the artist or the country so that we can know who you want to ask the question. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.